This is chapter 7 of the section 1, Fatigue from Variable Amplitude Loading. In this chapter, the main characteristics of loading histories are going to be presented as the most common damage rules to predict damage accumulation. An overview of load sequences and different cycle counting methods, and finally the application of all these to the stress life and strain life approaches. Service load histories are usually variable amplitude. Realistic representation of service loads is a key factor of successful fatigue analysis or design. It is important to accurately measure the applied loads on an existing component or structure. You can see on the slide two real load histories. To measure the load history, Transducers are attached to the critical areas of the component. The data are usually recorded and stored by a computer or other devices. The recorded data may be filtered so to isolate the primary loads from, no from noise, and then are often summarized or compressed by cycle counting methods in order to simplify the fatigue damage computations. Techniques for analysis and testing have been developed to predict whether variable amplitude service loads will produce acceptable or unacceptable fatigue lives. Data from constant amplitude tests are the basis for the analysis. The analysis may be simple, based on nominal stresses and the assumption that damage is linear with the number of cycles. One approach to variable load histories uses the concept of damage, which can be defined as the fraction of life, also referred as cycle ratio, used up by an event or a series of events. These fractions are added together. When the sum reaches 1 or 100, failure is then expected and predicted. For example, after a crack has been started, one can define damage by the growth of that crack. Loading events that produce zero crack will produce no damage. Many measures have been used to quantify fatigue damage. Metallurgical parameters, mechanical parameters and physical measures. For example, within metallurgical parameters we can use the size or number of dislocations. Within the mechanical parameters, uh, damage can be measured as a modification of the hardness, stress, strain or stiffness, for example. And the physical measures indirectly quantify the fatigue damage and consist of mainly non-destructive techniques. Palgrim Minor Linear Damage Rule is the most widely used approach to predict fatigue life. The damage caused by one cycle is defined as D equal to 1 divided by nf, where nf is the number of repetitions of this same cycle that equals the median life to failure. The damage produced by n such cycles is then n per d. The damaging effect of n1 cycles at stress amplitude 1 is assumed to be n1 divided by nf1 while the damaging effect of N2 cycles at stress amplitude 2 is assumed to be N2 divided by NF2, and so on. Then the failure is predicted when the sum up of all the ratios becomes 1. This expression is the linear damage rule proposed by Padre. Here it is applied to an example. The linear damage rule works in the following way. The mean life of ball bearings is 200 million cycles under 1 kN load. This is NF1. 30 million cycles under 2 kN load. This is NF2. So, how many cycles can we expect the bearing to last if the load is 1 kN 90% of the time and 2 kN 10% of the time? If the total number of applied cycles is n, the number 
of cycles at the, the 1 kN and the 2 kN loads are N1 equal to 0.9N and N2 equal to 0.1N respectively. Therefore, the total damage will be the sum up of the damages done by both loads. If we substitute the values on this expression, we obtain and we equal the damage to 1, we can obtain n, which will be the number of cycles that the bearings will last. Linear damage is open to many objectives. The sequence and interaction of events may have major influence on the fatigue life. The rate of damage accumulation may be a function of the load amplitude. Even though the linear damage rule ignores these effects, it is commonly used because none of other methods achieves better agreement with data from many different tests. There are theories that account for the nonlinear nature of fatigue damage accumulation by using nonlinear relations such as the one we can see on the slide, where the alpha depends on the load level. This figure shows the linear damage rule and previous nonlinear rule at three stress levels in a plot of fatigue damage versus cycle ratio. For a cycle ratio, different damage fractions are produced depending on the value of alpha. Though many nonlinear damage models have been developed, unfortunately, no one can encompass many of the complicating factors encountered during complex variable amplitude loading. Consequently, the Palgrin minor linear damage rule is still dominantly used in fatigue analysis or design in spite of, of its many shortcomings. Sequence effects exist both in the early stages during crack nucleation and microcrack growth and in the later stages, macrocrack growth of fatigue. It has been shown that the fatigue strength of smooth specimens is reduced more than indicated by the linear damage rule if a few cycles of fully reverse high stress amplitude are applied before testing with lower stress amplitudes. However, this effect is very small compared to the sequence effects on notched parts. On notched parts, the sequence effect can be very strong. Sequence effects can be very important and they depend not only on the number of cycles but also on the exact details of the load history. A few quantitative rules based on experience can be stated as follows. If the sequence of service load is completely unknown, one must decide whether to assume significant sequence effects or not. If the loading is random, with a normal or Gaussian probability distribution, with widely varying amplitudes at similar frequencies, there will be no definable sequence. If the loading history shows infrequent high loads in one direction, as for instance in the ground-air-ground -ground cycle of aircraft, one should expect sequence effects. Infrequent tensile overloads produce retardation of crack growth or crack arrest. Compressive, compressive overloads large enough to produce yielding can produce the opposite effect. When the future load history is known, one can follow its reversal by reversal, either by test programs applied to the part of analytically. The methods used to incorporate load sequences effects require knowledge of the monotonic and cyclic stress strain curves in addition to the fatigue properties. Load interaction models are usually used with a computer program.